Hey there guys, Alex from Mental Health Thinking here and today I've got something a little bit different. This is Mitchell and he's a dietitian who works with chronic conditions. So Mitchell, you've come here today to answer a couple of questions to do with diet and mental health. The first question I had is, from your point of view, is there any link between diet and mental health? Anything that we eat or drink you know, will affect our health in a number of ways. And that's not only our physical health, but also our mental health as well. Um, and there has been some good research around uh, diets that are high in uh, convenient foods or refined foods. Um, so things like uh, processed meats, uh, takeaway foods, foods that are very high in fat and sugar and low in other nutrients like fibre. Um, research has shown those kinds of diets uh, can lead to a greater risk of developing uh, mental health conditions such as depression. Yeah, so it's more of these uh, trans fats and also uh, saturated fat is something we need to limit as well, which is similar also. Uh, we do get them more predominantly from uh, animal fats uh, and processed foods, um, it, whereas our unsaturated fats, our polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, uh, they're not associated with a higher uh, risk of um, mental health concerns such as depression. Uh, also to a diet that is uh, low in B group vitamins as well. That uh, is an issue because B group vitamins are very important for um, the function of our nervous system including our brain. So if you do have a low intake of B group vitamins then your brain, your nervous system is going to function as well. We do get B group vitamins in a range of foods. So we do get some from some animal products um, such as you know, our meats for example. But then we also get them too from our whole grains, and then we also get some from dark green uh, vegetables as well. Um, so there's no one particular food to focus on, but trying to get a balance across different foods. Uh, so there is some evidence there that yeah, a poor diet can lead to, or at least contribute to, uh, conditions of the mind. Um, and there is also a lot of research to show that someone who is suffering from mental health concern uh, can benefit from improving their diet, so it may help with the recovery side of things as well. Okay, and. If people are having problems with their mood kind of fluctuating a lot throughout the day, what would you expect to see of their diet, given your past experience, and what kind of recommendations would you generally give to a person with that kind of issue? Uh, so if someone is having uh, you know, issues with their mood is coming up and down, uh, or even if they're just having uh, ongoing concerns with low mood, there are potentially some benefits from uh, managing their dietary intake. Uh, one area is managing their energy intake and making sure they have enough energy. Um, if we're low in energy or we're overly hungry, you're more likely to have uh, changes with your mood. Uh, so you're more likely to have a, a reduced or low mood uh, and be less mobile to do things as well. Um, one area is looking at uh, how quickly foods digest. Uh, so carbohydrate foods like breads and cereals, as we mentioned, um, some digest faster than others, some are quite slow to digest. Um, the term we use around that is uh, glycemic index or GI. Uh, so a food that's low GI will digest slowly. Something like a, a multi-grain bread for example, a really high fibre bread is low GI and will slowly digest, giving energy over a longer period of time mm. rather than something that, uh, such as white bread which is high GI. Mm. So it digests very quickly, gives you energy very quickly, but then so you might have that high, you do get a drop off quite quickly afterwards as well. And so then lower energy might then proceed a low mood as well. Okay. So you'd expect for those people to probably come in if they were having emotional regulation problems or problems with their mood fluctuating, that they were perhaps having high GI uh, food intake throughout the day and perhaps not enough uh, low GI, not enough fibre to balance that out. Would that be accurate what you said? Yeah, so that's true. Uh, and all too often, I think, um, if we're having fluctuations in mood, we're more likely to go for uh, convenient foods and, and perhaps mm. not foods that are low GI uh, and high fibre. Mm. Um, and foods that are high in fibre tend to digest more slowly anyway because of the fibre slows down digestion through the stomach. Um, so that is something that you would see. Uh, there are other things that I typically would have um, for a client that you know, maybe has an issue with who's fluctuating up and down. Um, certainly use of uh, foods or drinks that contain um, uh, socially acceptable drugs like alcohol and caffeine. Mm -hmm. uh, so if something like caffeine uh, is a stimulant, um, so caffeine being found in uh, coffee and a lot of teas as well, energy drinks, uh, cola drinks, that kind of thing. Um, so consuming those products and having that caffeine can then uh, elevate you, give you more of a, of a hit of energy um, but it's um, more so about getting a lift from that uh, particular drug, the caffeine. 
uh, out, whereas alcohol is quite the opposite. Um, so uh, it uh, is more or has a calming or relaxing effect um, when you consume alcohol. Uh, so uh, with that in mind, you might have someone who already has ups and downs, uh, not, you're not even regarding their diet, but then having something on top of that like caffeine which perks you up, you like to then have a down afterwards and perhaps vice versa with the alcohol as well. So uh, which food and drinks can improve somebody's mental state? So there isn't one particular diet that helps with mental health, uh, but there are some specific uh, nutrients that can uh, potentially help depending on the person's circumstances. Um, so something like omega-3 fatty acids, a uh, type of fat we find uh, in oily fish uh, like salmon, tuna, mackerel and sardines um, you know, can be potentially helpful. There's good research around omega-3 fatty acids being uh, very good for brain function um, and so uh, of course with mental health having close ties with um, uh, brain chemistry being altered uh, having something like a, high di a diet high in omega-3 fats uh, can be potentially beneficial. Other than fish and seafood, we also get it from some nuts, like walnuts and hazelnuts, and some dark green leafy vegetables like Brussels sprouts, uh, spinach, that kind of thing, and some seeds too, like chia seeds and seeds. Um, so those are the kind of things we do recommend uh, for most people to include in their diet because we get other health benefits from them. Hmm. Um, but particularly for someone trying to improve their mental health, getting those omega-3 fatty acids can be helpful. Um, there are some other things. We did mention B-group vitamins earlier. Um, they certainly do have an effect on the brain as well. Uh, and uh, we also get a, a link between uh, one of the B-group vitamins and uh, tryptophan, which is a type of protein. Mm. Uh, together they produce serotonin in the brain, mm. and so that can help with mood and also with uh, improving uh, sleep quality as well. Uh, so if you have um, things like uh, anxiety that might affect your sleep or you suffer with insomnia, uh, then trying to have um, foods that are rich in tryptophan uh, can be very helpful in producing more serotonin and helping you to get a better night's sleep. Um, okay, so there are things like your dairy, your almonds and things like that. A any particular uh, suggestions for high food, high in tryptophan? Yeah, so uh, excellent question. Uh, any uh, foods that we consider as having complete protein, and that's uh, animal protein, uh, will uh, definitely have tryptophan in it. So that includes all kinds of dairy or products made from dairy. Uh, any kind of animal flesh, so whether it's red meat, poultry, or fish or seafood again. Uh, okay. And also to eggs as well. Uh, so they're all quite rich in tryptophan. Uh, some of them as well do have uh, bigger vitamins that will help uh, with producing the serotonin. And milk is a great example of that. Uh, there's kind of that old fashioned notion of having a warm glass of milk before bedtime to help you sleep. And there is some truth to that in that um, we do get uh, the two ele main elements we need to produce that serotonin in the brain to help us sleep. Okay. So you've mentioned a few times uh, particular vitamins, for example, the B-group vitamins. I imagine that people could kind of think, all right, well, I can just get a multivitamin. Is that something that could be helpful for them? Uh, another great question. At the end of the day, uh, I would say it does depend on the individual. Uh, as a dietitian, I try to recommend that people start with uh, foods and drinks, uh, and that, that should be the main focus. Having said that, if you have a true deficiency where your levels of a particular vitamin uh, are quite low, then uh, it can be difficult to get those levels back up um, just from foods and drinks. Mm -hmm. So in the short term for those kind of people, that having those uh, deficiencies, having a multivitamin or a supplement that uh, is specific, like a big group supplement, that that can be very helpful in the short term before transitioning back into having to say a general overall healthy eating habits. Okay then, so it's when it's hard to shift somebody's eating habits, uh, a multivitamin or a particular vitamin might help them in the in the interim before they can shift that. But with the with the overall uh, goal to actually shift their diet more. Yeah, ideally we want to focus on routine and habits, um, and so to be as healthy as possible in any sense of that word. Um, having good routine, uh, I guess, is the, the right path for that. Mm. And so, from my viewpoint, that's having healthy eating habits, not so much being on a diet or a plan of eating. Um, but having a style of eating where we include a variety of foods and we have those foods in moderation, eating regular meals. Mm. And so that is, I guess, what humans are built to do, to, to eat uh, foods and have those uh, vitamins and minerals coming from those natural sources. Something like a supplement is much like a medication, I suppose. It is there as an add-on and in most cases best used in instances where someone is unhealthy or deficient. Mm.
Okay, well conversely to my question about things that are good for mental health, are there any foods that should be avoided? Mm. Uh, so, touched on a couple of things like uh, alcohol and caffeine. Um, for someone with anxiety, ideally you would try to avoid something that's going to stimulate you um, and potentially um, aggravate your uh, anxiety. So, having drinks as we, uh, coffee or teas um, or energy drinks that are high in caffeine, uh, you know, that would be a, a poor choice for someone with anxiety. So, that would be one that I would recommend avoiding. Having said that, not all teas contain caffeine. We do have herbal teas. Something like a lemon tea or a ginger tea is caffeine free and that kind of thing could be a substitute for an individual with anxiety. Okay. Uh, on perhaps the depression side of things, um, trying to have more stable energy intake uh, across the day by having regular meals is important. Uh, having said that, uh, avoiding those foods that give us those peaks in energy, so something like the high GI bread such as white bread is one example. Things high in sugar would also do the same thing as the white bread. So something like a soft drink or a regular cordial mm -hmm. uh, or lollies would give a lot of sugar all at once. That sugar would get broken down and put into our blood very quickly, giving us a spike in energy and perhaps spiking our uh, motivation, our mood in that short period, but then having a drop off afterwards and perhaps uh, worsening someone's uh, low mood. Okay. And the, the last question that I had for you is there are quite a few uh, quite specific diets out there that people follow. For example, the, the vegetarian and the vegan diets and also uh, the, the paleo diet, I think mm -hmm. are quite common ones today. Yes. wonder if we could perhaps just discuss those three diets and uh, mm -hmm. give an impression for what you might look out for with people that are going for a specific diet like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are a lot of diets out there and those are three common ones. Um, so as a dietitian, I do see a range of people who have already uh, changed their eating habits or have a certain uh, ideas around uh, food. Um, so with something like, say, the vegetarian diet, um, we as dietitians don't uh, typically recommend someone to, to be on a vegetarian diet um, because there is a potential for uh, you know, some deficiencies there potentially, uh, much the same with vegan being an extension of that. Okay, what kinds of deficiencies do you look for in particular there? Yeah, so iron and vitamin B12 are a couple of uh, top ones there. Um, so uh, animal products are, are rich in iron and B12. So if we're avoiding uh, animal products altogether, say with a vegan diet, there is a very high risk of those deficiencies. Mm -hmm. um, if we're low in iron and B12, we can develop a condition called anemia. And with that, you can have a reduction in energy levels, feel very fatigued, uh, if you already have a low mood, then certainly that can contribute to that as well. Uh, and so there is a, a, a real knock-on effect um, from avoiding particular foods. Having said that, if I have someone come to me who's on a vegetarian or vegan diet, um, it's not my job to try to talk them out of doing that. Mm -hmm. It's really my job to make sure that they're the healthiest vegetarian or vegan that they can be. Yeah. Um, and much the same, conversely, a paleo diet uh, has all of those um, protein-rich, iron-rich foods as animal products are uh, key uh, in a paleo diet. Uh, with the paleo diet though, there's an avoidance of um, a couple of food groups that we recommend, which is our bread and cereals or grains group, and also to our dairy uh, as well. Um, so with that in mind, um, there is a potential for uh, some deficiencies there also. It's not to say that you can't be very healthy on a paleo diet, but you need to be educated enough to understand what you're missing out on. So if we don't have dairy products, for example, they're very rich in calcium okay, uh, and protein. We do get the protein from the other products, the meats perhaps, that uh, um, on a paleo diet you would consume. So we wouldn't miss out there. But the calcium, though, we'd have to be mindful of where we get calcium from other than dairy. And most people tend not to be too savvy on that. Okay. Uh, some uh, food products that do provide calcium are the edible bones of uh, fish. So, um, so if we eat small fish and we're eating them whole, we're actually consuming their bones, which just like ours are a rich source of calcium. Mm -hmm. um, consuming the marrow of um, larger bones from bigger animals also is a source of calcium. And we do get some calcium from vegetarian sources too. So there's a little bit in things like uh, oranges and broccoli. Uh, we do get some from some nuts like almonds. So there's sources there, but being aware of uh, what they are is key if you're going to 
uh, change a diet and be restricted and avoid particular foods. Yeah, eggshells are another good one, aren't they? They're basically cal calcium carbonate. Well, that's right, exactly. And so, it, yeah, that's a perfect example. Uh, it comes down to, I suppose, being aware of what those foods are and whether or not you can fit them into your diet. Mm. Um, I have uh, had uh, numerous people come to me that are on particular diets, say a vegetarian diet, and they're very healthy in one regard perhaps to see me because of a specific health concern they have at that time. Mm. Um, and on the opposite side, I have had some very unhealthy vegetarians come to see me, but it's simply because they weren't very well educated before starting that particular diet and perhaps developed some deficiencies, perhaps quite particular or fussy with certain vegetables in their diet, not realising that some of those were essential to get nutrients that they are now messing out on because of their new diet. Um, so in order to be healthy, you do need to be quite savvy and knowledgeable about what you're consuming. Um, as a dietitian, the job is really to try to simplify it, and that's why we look at food groups. Uh, foods within one particular group have very similar nutrients. So if I can have a person consuming a variety of foods across those two groups, then I know that they're going to get a variety of nutrients and be healthy. They could look at avoiding a particular food group, but then we have to make sure we're focusing on those nutrients from other foods that we would otherwise miss out on. So that's my video on diet when it comes to mental health. I hope you've gotten something out of it. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to see more, and I'll be making them every week, hit subscribe. Thanks.